Hey guys, welcome to 80 Acres. Lacey here. We are fixing to go into the garden. It is an overcast day here in Oklahoma. It is April and I have these potatoes, these beautiful potatoes ready to go out into the garden. So let's go. We've actually spent the last couple of weeks getting the garden ready. It looks empty, bare, sad, lonely. Any of those words will fit this garden right now. It just looks really sad. And so we're going to change that today and grow something in it. Last year I grew my potatoes over here and they did actually really well using the root stout method. And so I'm going to use that same method again using this bed right here. I have 11 beds, no rhyme or reason. I'm just going to put them in this one because I mean, why not? So let's get started. We have a little bit of that growing in there along here. So what I'm just gonna do is grab my handy little weasel and break up the soil. Apparently I have kids coming out here. <laughs> and hiding treasures. Good. It's not the most glorious job, but I guess it's a job that we have to do. <laughs> and that would be cleaning out the goat shed. It's not actually my favorite chore. As you see the dust flying up a little bit that is actually wood ash for my wood burning stove i put that all over my garden throughout the winter time and to amend my beds before planting i just put a layer of manure down and no there is no need to compost this this is a cold poo which releases nutrients really slow unlike your hot manures like chicken poop which needs to be composted so i can actually add this all throughout the growing season without any risk of my plants getting burned up I just wanted to let you guys know that these are not certified seed potatoes, nor are they organically grown. These are just regular old potatoes that I bought from the grocery store. Um, and whenever they started sprouting, I just set them aside because I want them to do their potato thing. And good thing I did because whenever I went to go buy my seed potatoes this year, I there was none to be had. I could not buy them. So <laughs> this is all I got for the year. Hopefully I can get some more to sprout in my pantry. And I'm just gonna go ahead and lay them in the ground because guess what? even these will grow. I have done it the last several years and they grow just as well as certified seed potatoes. I'm going to stagger these because I know I have a few more potatoes that I can actually set out here. That one is a lot. When they're pointing upwards, that's the way I plant them. And this one's a little squishy. That's all right. We're going to plant it. And I'm just going to kind of keep them a little close together so I have space to grow more down the row. Here we are at zone 6B and I usually get my potatoes planted late March. Here I am in the first week of April so I am just right on time. Potatoes usually need 80 to 100 days to fully mature from potato to harvest and they typically don't like over 100 degree weather. So I'd say we're in the ballpark of getting these potatoes in the ground right on time.
Like I said earlier, I am doing the rootstock method again this year because I was in my third trimester and I was getting clean potatoes easily out of the ground. It was a breeze. So I'm going to go with that method again. And all it is is just a heavily mulched system. And with potatoes, the term hill up still applies. And so when the time comes, I'm just going to add another layer of straw and quite possibly another and maybe even another. And that's really all there is to it. It makes an incredibly easy harvest. To keep my efforts from blowing away, I find every single tool that I can to lay on top to weigh it down because this is real life. It's Oklahoma. Things just blow away. I got done with the potatoes and I was like, you know what? I've got onions too. So let's plant some onions too. <laughs> I'm not saying I'm going to plant all of these, but I think there is 75 in each bag. Yeah, so a couple hundred onions. I don't think I'll plant them all in this bed, but... I don't know if you're really wondering on how to get bigger onions, but something that I would have liked to know whenever I first began gardening was how to grow big onions. I was always devastated because when I plucked an onion out of the ground, it was as big as my thumb and it was just so puny and tiny. And after I learned how an onion actually grows, things started turning around for me. I had to choose a short day onion or a long day onion. Those two things actually matter which zone you are in. If you are my fellow 6B growers, then choose the long day onion. We have the 14 to 16 hours that it needs to grow. And another thing that the years of gardening has showed me is that onions don't actually mind growing in straw. They actually quite like it. It's less compactful, less resistance to actually grow that bulb. So there's another tip to grow big onions. <laughs> My chicken coop is gonna be the wind block right now. Everywhere I go, I try to get out of the wind and then the wind whips around the corner. It's not really any stopping it. <laughs> not where we are, there's just literally no trees. No trees at all. Um, but potatoes, onions, we got them in the ground and I am so happy to be in the garden again. Ugh, so happy. I mean, I know I have a few more potatoes in my pantry that are forming eyes. So maybe in about a week or so I can put them out here with these guys. Chickens keep on scratching and picking at this door, thinking that they're gonna be let out. It's six o'clock, yeah, it's six o'clock right now. So uh, bottle caps need to be fed, children need to be fed, so I really need to get off of here. But what I really wanna know is where you guys are from and what are you growing? Let's grow things together, you know? So I'm gonna get off of here, go help with those things, and we will catch you in the next one, guys. Bye. <laughs> it totally missed. That one's trying to steal it, huh? Yeah, he is. I'm never gonna use that.